you asked what real change might look like. And I think it's a really, I mean, that is a really interesting question for liberals and radicals, because there is a hunger for change out there among millions of people who feel sort of insecure, uncertain about the future, and do want something, do want that to change. I think that change only comes through a big imaginative idea, a sort of picture of another kind of future, which gives people, a, which connects with that fearfulness in the back of people's minds and offers them a release from it. That's the key thing. But I think the, the question for liberals and radicals is that the, they are always suspicious of big ideas. That's what lurks underneath the liberal mindset. And the reason is, and, and they're quite right in a way, is, is look what happened last time when millions of people got swept up in a big idea. Look at the last hundred years at what happened in Russia and then in Germany. The point is, is that change, political change is frightening. It's scary. It's thrilling because it is dynamic and it's doing something to change the world. But it is scary because it can change things in ways where nothing is secure. It's like being in an earthquake. Even the solid ground underneath you begins to move and things dissolve that you think are solid and real. And I think that the question liberals and the left have to face at the moment is a really sort of difficult question, which is, do you really want change? Do you really want it? Because if you do, many of them might find themselves in a very uncertain world where they might lose all sorts of things. They, I mean, what we're talking about in many cases is people who are the sort of at the centre of society at the moment. They're not out of the margins. They would have a lot to lose from real political change because it really would change things in the structure of power. Or, and this is the brutal question, do you just want things to change a little bit? Do you just want the banks to be a little bit nicer, say? Or people to be a little more respectful of each other's identities, all of which is good. But basically, you carry on living in a nice world where you tinker with it. Those, that's the key question. <laughs> but you can't just sit there forever worrying about big ideas because there are millions of people out there who do want change. And the key thing is they feel they've got nothing to lose. You might have lots to lose, but they feel they've got absolutely nothing to lose. But at the moment, they're being led by the right. So things won't remain the same, but society may go off in ways that you really don't want. So what you, what I think, I mean, in answer to your question, what you need is a powerful vision of the future with all its dangers. But it's also quite thrilling. It would be an escape from the staticness of the world that we have today. And to do that, you've got to engage with the giant forces of power that now run the world at the moment. You might, and the, and the key, but the key thing is, is in confronting those powers and trying to, to transform the world, you might lose a lot. This is a sort of forgotten idea, is that actually you surrender yourself up to a big idea. And in the process, you might lose something, but you'd actually gain in a bigger sense because you change the world for the better. I know it sounds soppy, but sort of this is the forgotten thing about politics, is that you give up some of your individualism to something bigger than yourself. You surrender yourself, and it's a lost idea. And I think, really in answer to your question, is you can spot real change happening when you see people from the liberal middle classes beginning to give themselves up to something, surrender themselves for something bigger than themselves. And at the moment... There is nothing like that in the liberal imagination.